Today, many schools across America are divided by where you live and how wealthy your neighborhood is. But did you know that in the 1960s, schools were legally segregated by race? And when the law was finally changed, it sparked outrage among many whites. But in the midst of this chaos, two people showed the world the power of integration. The story begins in the mid 20th century, a time when racial segregation was enforced by laws and practices across much of the United States. In schools, this meant that a type of educational apartheid where white and black students were kept apart. Then, in 1954, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that racial segregation in schools violated the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment and had to stop. But change was slow to come. In 1960, six-year-old Ruby Bridges made history as the first black student to enroll at an all-white elementary school in the South. But she was met with a wave of hostility from the crowd of white protesters who had gathered. Over 500 children were taken out of the school by their families in protest. Newly employed teacher Barbara Henry found herself with a class of just one child. Ruby learned her lessons by herself and ate lunch alone. Barbara Henry and Ruby formed a strong bond of friendship and never missed a day. Gradually, more white children returned to school. And thanks to Barbara Henry's insistence, the principal eventually allowed Ruby to interact with the other children. Barbara Henry's determination and Ruby's fortitude became an inspiration to other Black families who eventually began to enroll their children too. The courage of a six-year-old girl was famously immortalized on canvas by the American artist Norman Rockwell. And in 1996, millions of television viewers witnessed Barbara Henry and Ruby Bridges' emotional reunion. In what ways did Barbara Henry and Ruby Bridges each show courage in the fight for integration in schools? 